This lesson is about finding the argument of a complex number. Suppose we had a complex number 2 plus 3i, which we could also think of as the point 2, 3, and we wanted to find its argument, meaning we want to find the angle formed by the x-axis. What we could do to find this angle is create a triangle, call the angle theta, say, and set up a tangent equation in order to solve for theta. To further solve for theta, we would use the inverse tangent here. However, this conversion from tangent to inverse tangent is only 100% reliable when we know that theta is an acute angle, meaning between 0 and 90, which you can tell because our complex number is in quadrant 1 that theta is between 0 and 90. So this is completely valid mathematics, nothing to worry about. At this point, the calculator will approximate theta for you, and although you get a decimal, I'm going to round that decimal to about 56 degrees. And we say that the argument of the complex number 2 plus 3i is about 56 degrees because that's the angle formed by the x-axis. So much for quadrant 1. But complications can arise when we look at quadrant 2 or 3 or 4 because in those quadrants, coordinates have negative numbers in them. For the remainder of this video, let's look at how we can deal with those negative numbers effectively and still find the argument of the complex number. So, let's move to quadrant 2. Here's a point in quadrant 2. Suppose that point were negative 5 plus 2i, also associated with the point negative 5, 2. And again, let's take a look at how we can handle the negative numbers and still find the argument of this complex number. First of all, the argument of this complex number is this angle in orange right here, represented by theta. And in order to find theta in quadrant 2, I find it easier to find the acute angle shown here as beta instead. So let's focus our attention simply on finding beta. Beta is easier to find because it is an acute angle inside of a triangle for which we know the measurements. And so to find beta, we can set up a tangent equation and notice when I set this equation up, I'm using the y-coordinate and the x-coordinate, but I'm not using the negative sign because I'm considering the acute angle, which came from the positive numbers. Now, because beta is an acute angle, I know for a fact that beta is between 0 and 90. I can use the inverse tangent to find it. A calculator will give me a decimal. I've rounded that decimal to about 22 degrees, and now I know that I have a 22 degree angle here. However, my problem is to find the argument of this complex number, in other words, to find theta. So in order to find theta, let's observe the following. Theta and 22 together create essentially a half circle. In other words, 22 plus theta has to be 180. And so by subtracting, I can find out what theta is. Theta being the argument of my complex number, I now have the solution that I desired. Let's further this discussion to quadrant 3. Here's a point in quadrant 3. Suppose we have the complex number negative 1 minus 2i associated with the point negative 1, negative 2. Again, if I'm looking for the argument of this complex number, I'm looking for this angle, theta. But in order to find that angle, it might be easier to find this angle in red here, call it beta first, because that angle is an acute angle. 
I can view it as a portion of a triangle with no negative numbers. And if I can find beta, I can then proceed to find theta. So first beta. We can set up a tangent equation, again using the y-coordinate and the x-coordinate, but again, not the negative numbers. And use, because I know that beta is an acute angle, I can apply the inverse tangent, round beta to 63 degrees, and now I know I have a 63 degree angle here. But of course we want the argument of this complex number, which is theta. And so, this picture here should convince you that if I know the red angle beta, I can find theta because 180 plus 63 will give me theta. And now that I know that theta is 243 degrees, I have the solution I desire, the argument of the complex number. Let's now turn our attention to quadrant four. Here's a point in quadrant four. Say we have the complex number seven minus four i, which we associate with this point. In this case, because I want the argument of that complex number, I want the angle that wraps all the way around there, shown as theta in this diagram. Well, just as I did before, rather than trying to find theta directly, it might be more expeditious to find the red angle beta first. So in order to find, to find beta, I can view it as an acute angle inside of this triangle. This way I can set up a tangent equation to find beta without using any negative numbers. Notice I have my y-coordinate and my x-coordinate, but I'm not bothering to include the negatives because beta is an acute angle. And because it is, I can apply the inverse tangent, use a calculator. This works out to be about 29 point something if I recall, so we'll round that to 30 degrees. And I now know that I have a 30 degree angle here. But again, I'm looking for the argument, which is the blue angle, theta. This diagram here should convince you that the blue and the red combined make a full circle or restated theta plus 30 equals 360. Subtracting will give me the value of theta, which ultimately is the argument of this complex number, the solution that I had been looking for. And that concludes the lesson.